Mark, when it comes to energy drinks, what are the primary ingredients in these drinks that are providing us with this energy? Well, the market has experienced an incredible right. uh, explosion uh, of these so-called energy drinks. And there's mm -hmm. two classes. There's energy drinks, which are full of water and other forms of sugars or, or sometimes non-caloric uh, sweeteners with various kinds of stimulant materials, mm -hmm. uh, food, food items, uh, caffeine, herbs, etc. Then there's energy shots, which are usually two-ounce little bottles that mm -hmm. contain a lot of the same ingredients you find in the energy drinks without the water, obviously, and without often the sugar or whatever, because, uh, or as much oh, okay. sugar because you don't need to sweeten it because you're taking a shot that might be mm -hmm. sugar sweetened or sweetened with stevia or sweetened with some other, with other form of, of a sweetener. Uh, basically, and this market's exploding, it's something like a $4 billion industry that's kind of come out of nowhere in the last few years. Uh, and it is everywhere, yeah. It's astonishing. It was started by Red Bull mm -hmm. maybe a decade ago, which I believe is now, I think, a four I think it's Red Bull is now a $4 billion company alone. And then uh, the ener energy shot market, which is just the little two-ounce mm -hmm. bottles, is close to $900 million, almost a billion dollars just in energy shots alone. And now they're Goodness. spawning the reverse type product, which is also now the beginning of we're seeing some sedative or sleep inducing or relaxing type, <laughs> okay. you know, uh, anti-energy drinks, if you will, because uh, for the people that are feeling too maxed out or too right. stressed out or maybe too nervous and jittery or looking for a way to kind of calm down. So they're, they're marketing to the other side of the spectrum, so to speak. Okay. In the energy drink and energy shot domain, there's three or four basic ingredients. Uh, one of them is going to be caffeine and or caffeine containing herbs. Mm -hmm. Caffeine containing herbs would be uh, green tea, okay. uh, yerba mate from Argentina, uh, cola, which is uh, what makes Coca Cola and Pepsi Cola so famous. That originally mm -hmm. it was cola, which is a West African herb that contains caffeine. Okay. Um, and other herbs that would also contain caffeine in them, uh, or the extracts of them. All right. Then also B vitamins and other vitamins, particularly a lot of your B vitamins, are very commonly found in many of these energy drinks and energy shots. Mm -hmm. In addition, you'll find a number of amino acids, particularly L-carnitine and taurine, taurine, which are very ubiquitous uh, in materials found in almost every one of these things. And then there's a bunch of different specialty ingredients that don't necessarily uh, show up in every one of these things, but they could include them, like mm -hmm. ginseng extract, usually Asian uh, ginseng extract, of whatever undefined strength or concentration, they usually don't say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll put ginkgo biloba extract in there. All right. And uh, other herbs as well. That's pretty packed. Pretty packed. And I've, I've left out a, a bunch of these because different companies have different formulations, of course, trying to show that they're unique. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there seems to be a basic uh, skeleton, if you will, of the B vitamins, uh, the amino acids like taurine and carnitine, the uh, caffeine, which is almost always the primary or most universal ingredient in, mm -hmm. in these drinks, and then other specialty uh, ingredients. How do these stimulants affect the central nervous system? The way the stimulants affect the central nervous system is they stimulate the central nervous system. That's basically one of the primary oh. ways these things work. They're mm -hmm. stimulants uh, by definition. Uh, particularly the caffeine. I mean, many of these things have anhydrous yeah. or crystalline caffeine, which is a synthetic caffeine, often aided and or supplanted or supplemented with naturally occurring caffeine found in the concentrated herbal extracts that they'll add, mm -hmm. like the uh, mat yerba mate or the green tea extract and or uh, a little bit of theobromine from chocolate, perhaps, or other forms of uh, caffeine from uh, plant sources. So these are basically... Uh, but like the shots and these drinks can contain up to 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, and in mm -hmm. some cases, a few cases, you'll see even up to 300 milligrams of caffeine in one of these drinks or shots. Now, just for comparison purposes, your average cup of coffee will contain anywhere from 80 to 120 milligrams of caffeine, depending on what the quality of the coffee, how it's brewed, how long mm -hmm. it's brewed, etc. So 100 milligrams of uh, caffeine is equivalent to more or less a cup of coffee, depending on the quality of the coffee and brew, brewing style. It's also equal to a no-dose, which mm -hmm. is the, the synthetic right. caffeine drugstore stimulant product. So if you get 200 milligrams of caffeine, it's like two or three cups of coffee, depending on the level of the caffeine in the coffee. So it's a pretty good 
little jolt. It you know, is, that, isn't it? It does. It gives you a, a jolt, and it lasts for about four or five hours, depending. Mm -hmm. on, I mean, the biggest product on the market uses the five-hour in the in, in the trademark. That's the trademark of the product, and uh, these things uh, keep people uh, energized, uh, focused, uh, whatever, for a significant amount of time. There are some concerns among health professionals and some athletic coaches about yes. the use of these energy drinks for uh, young children and or adolescents, particularly in the domain of athletic performance. Okay. Concerns have been raised about the impact or the effect of this much caffeine uh, for young children and, ad and uh, adolescents mm -hmm. taking 100, 200 milligrams or more of caffeine at a sh in a short period of time or even throughout the day. All right. It's a lot. It is. Uh, and some of the proposed potential adverse effects of these energy drinks uh, usually pertain or correlate directly with the kinds of uh, adverse effects associated with high amounts of caffeine. Nervousness, irritability, mm -hmm. uh, insomnia, etc. Yes. So basically uh, the adverse effects that most of the people are concerned about especially in, in younger, younger people, are uh, consistent with uh, high uses of caffeine. And that would be the detriment right there? The potential detriment. I mean, mm -hmm. caffeine is a ubiquitous uh, yes, it ingredient is. in our culture. We mm -hmm. see caffeine in, in cola drinks and caffeinated mm -hmm. beverages. They're sold That's in schools, true. sold in every uh, office building. They're sold in government office buildings, uh, military reservations, uh, convenience stores. You can't go anywhere without seeing caffeine or coffee stores or coffee shops like mm -hmm. Starbucks mm -hmm. or whatever. Not right. to give anybody a plug. And uh, we are a culture that is almost uh, or virtually addicted to caffeine. It's a very hmm. well tolerated addiction, if you will, in our culture. I mean, I have a hobby of collecting cartoons, as many people know, uh, regarding health issues. And almost every week or every month in the funny papers, we see cartoon characters mm -hmm. making fun, or the cartoonists, through mm -hmm. their cartoon right. characters, making fun of the fact that the cartoon characters can't get their day going without a cup of a stiff cup of coffee, sometimes the big cup of coffee. Well, I'll reduce my coffee habit down to one cup. Of course, the cup is the size of five cups of coffee, and that's mm -hmm. the joke. Uh, or other forms of making right. fun of the fact that so many people are so... If I use the word addicted, I'm probably not being this, uh, erroneous in my description. It may sound a little harsh, but there right. is a strong caffeine addiction, which is somewhat tolerated in this culture because it's productivity-oriented, whereas we do not tolerate uh, addiction to alcohol or other kinds of substances that actually inhibit or impede mm. productivity. That makes sense. It's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing, and it's commerce, yeah. too. Now, I'm not condoning one way or the other. I'm just right. describing a, a phenomenon, and this is a phenomenal uh, 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 explosion and in interest in this area. And it's not just the caffeine, however, that gives people the energy. There are right. other, other ingredients in these caffeine-laden uh, beverages that ha have also f increased energy, increased ATP production in the cells, uh -huh. right. adenosine triphosphate, which is a, a chemical in the mitochondria of the cells. Every cell in our body has the mitochondria. We inherit from our mother. And that's like the, the, the battery or the, the, mm -hmm, the, the, right. the, the cellular uh, energy mechanism in each cell that, that powers the cellular uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And what happens with this, some of these uh, ingredients uh, in these energy drinks and energy shots is that actually increases ATP production, which is mm -hmm. actually how to increase actual cellular metabolism, uh, metabolism, how to increase cellular energy.